In this lesson, we're going to learn about box modeling and using the smoothing methods. All right, so in the last lesson, we had talked about box modeling without smoothing, and we had talked about that it's okay to use ingons, and we could get away with uh, chamfering a lot of the different edges without worrying about those um, polygons being ingons or triangles or whatever. Um, but with the last method, we really have to make sure that we are smoothing it out enough to where it actually looks smooth. Now, we're going to learn about using uh, those modeling methods, but using something like Turbo Smooth or NERMS. So to get started, let's go ahead and just create a single plane in our front view. And I'm going to hit F3 just so I can see exactly what I'm creating. And we're going to create a door frame. So I'm going to drag out this plane, and I'm going to go ahead and just type in uh, 2.2 .2 on our length and I'll do 1.1 on our width. Okay, so that should give me a good uh, ratio there. I'm going to go ahead and take the width and length segments down to one by one and then I'm going to convert this to editable poly. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to uh, vertex mode and what I want to do is I want to round out these corners okay, for our door frame. So to do this I can use chamfer Okay, and as I increase this, you'll see that it gives us those corners, and I could even um, add in some segments if I was in edge mode. But you're seeing that with these vertices, we don't have that option available. So I'm going to just going to type in 0.2, and let's try that one more time. So 0.2, and it looks like my num lock is not on. Sorry about that. So we'll type in 0.2. There we go. And now that I've got this width, what I can do is I can come in and I can go to edge mode and I could select these and I could come in and start to add in some segments right there in the middle. But it's not necessary because I'm going to be using a smoothing method. So if I go to vertex mode, I can right click and cut and cut is going to allow me to create quads in this. Now you'll see that this is an end gun. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six sides. So I need to convert these all to quads. So I'm going to cut from here, straight down. And then I'm going to right click, and then I'm going to uh, click on this vertex point and go straight down to something like this. Now I'm going to select these vertices right here, and I'm going to use that Make Planer. And I'm going to make sure that they are lined up in the X direction. I'm going to do the same thing here. There we go. So now I've got three quads. All right, so now let's go ahead and go to polygon mode and select all of the polygons in this object, and I'm going to simply use inset. Now what inset is going to do is create that polygon on the inside of this. And this is just starting out my door frame. So I'm going to go to something like 0.15 and then hit OK. Now you just need to be careful around the bottom here because we want to make sure that the door is flush all the way across the bottom. So I want to get rid of these polygons right here. So I'm going to hit delete, go to vertex mode, I'm going to select these and drag those straight down. And then I'm going to take all of these vertices and align those in the Z and just pull that up to that origin point. Let's try that one more time. Let's go to Y, try to line those up. All right, so if I go to my front view, I'm going to select these grab my scale tool and just kind of pull those in toward one another just trying to relax that a little bit more okay so now let's go to polygon mode and select these three and then I'm going to grab my move tool and pull those straight out like so let's hit F3 so we can see what we've got okay so I've started creating this door frame and I've kept all quads at this point and let's go ahead and just push that back against the wall just to get it positioned pretty closely. Alright, so now what we need to do is we need to create another rim and I'm going to use inset, but you'll notice that it's starting to um, really tear up the geometry. Okay, and I really don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to inset to zero and then I'm going to hit OK and then I'm going to scale this in the X direction and scale that in and then I'm going to go to edge mode and select those edges right across the top and just move those straight down. Okay, so that allows me to have that same rim that I had before. 
we grab just this one and pull that down and I'm just trying to get the same distance all the way around alright great so now let's select those polygons there and I'm going to extrude that backward okay and I'll extrude that up against that wall there and then I'm just gonna hit OK and then I can simply delete that let me hit Alt Q so we can isolate this object now I can select all these polygons across the bottom and delete those as well okay and that's gonna get rid of anything extra alright so we've got this door frame started and now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and add our details in now we always want to add our details in before we start smoothing and things like that uh, just simply because we don't know exactly how the topology is going to run um, until we've got it all built in there so I'm gonna to go to edge mode select all of these edges across this horizontal portion of the frame and we're gonna use connect and I'm gonna go ahead and create let's just do let's do two for right now I'm gonna hit OK on that now I want to make sure that my vertices are straight across so I'm gonna go ahead and use that make planer so let's go into the Y same thing here I'm gonna push this up some and I'm gonna pull these down let's go to edge mode and select these and we're gonna use connect again and we're just going to pinch and just kinda of push that away so about 44 should do let's go to polygon mode I'm gonna select these polys here and just push those in just to kinda of give this a little bit of an indention and make this frame a little more interesting alright so now I can come in and I can make my adjustments to its overall shape if I want make that a little bit wider okay, and that looks pretty good now I want to create kind of an element at the top of this frame just to kind of give it maybe a light or something like that to let somebody know that this room is occupied or something like that so I'm gonna to go to edge mode and select these edges right here and let's use connect now I'm gonna go ahead and type in zero for this just to have zero pinch I'm gonna hit OK on that let's go to our front view and I want lines that are straight up and down so I'm gonna go ahead and select all of those and align those in the X same thing here now that we have that we're gonna go into edge mode and select these sets of edges this ring and use connect one more time and I'm gonna pinch this and spread it pretty close to my door here let's hit OK and I'm gonna grab this edge and pull that straight up okay so we get kind of this a um, little bit of a an indention that comes off of that select this edge and do kind of the same thing just to raise that up a little bit and then if I want I can select these edges and spread those apart from one another but you'll notice that whenever I select these edges they're not going to scale apart evenly so I have to convert that selection so if I hold down control and go to vertex mode you'll see that my scale tool resets to the center of that selection and I can scale those apart in the Z or I'm sorry the X okay we can do something kind of along those lines and then I can come in select these polygons inset those to create a rim and then I can extrude or bevel so I'm gonna bevel this I'm gonna take my height into a negative direction and then bevel that at like negative point zero one and we'll hit OK now you can change the shape of this however you see fit and we should be pretty good now I've come in and I've created quads all the way through this object and we should have zero problems with our smoothing because we've adhered to these guidelines so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a turbo smooth to this object now whenever I do this you'll notice that a lot of our detail is now gone let's go ahead and bump up our iterations to two and I'm going to use this isoline display just to kind of help with the viewing of the topology now I want these to be pretty hard edges so a way to get those hard edges back is to add more geometry at the editable poly level so let's go down to editable poly and show end result this gives us 
the end result, but we are still able to look our work inside of the editable poly modifier. So if I go to edge mode, it's going to give me this cage that shows the original object or the editable poly object. Okay, so now I can come in and I can add it in loops by using the edit swift loop tool under our graphite modeling tools. Now if you don't know where this is at, you need to come up here and activate those graphite modeling tools. So I'm going to use edit swift loop and I'm going to add a couple of edges in here. So right here along the front, let me go ahead and change the color of this really quickly. Let's apply that gray material just so we can see this a little bit easier. Now we'll try this again. And as I start to add in edges, you'll notice that the shape changes and things begin to tighten up. Okay, so that's becoming a little bit more flat along that edge. Come across here. That's becoming a little bit more flat. We can come across here and really start to sharpen up some of these edges. So anywhere that you want edges to be harder, you need to create a segment that cuts across that curve. So right here, the curve is kind of coming down. So I want to cut across it to harden that up. And I'm going to do that in both directions. Okay. And also across the top here. Okay. And then I'm also going to go right across the bottom, right in here. And on the inside, that starts to harden up those edges. And then we'll go across. And I'm just left clicking to add these segments in. Alright, so this is looking really good up to this point here. Alright, so now we just have this portion that has become uh, very round. If we want to tighten these up, we'll have to bring these edges a little bit closer together. So if I create a segment right here in the middle, you'll notice that that tightens that up a little bit. Now be careful because what it will also do is begin to square things off a little. So let me just show you an example. If I cut along this corner to tighten it up, it starts to square it off and becomes really, really tight. So let's go out of edge mode just to see that. So if I want that to be perfectly round, I can't ed add edges in there. So putting one right in the middle will help. And then I'll come in and make my adjustments to help out with that curve. So I'll pull this out, do the same thing here. Okay, and you'll see how that begins to tighten that up. I could also come across, use Edit Swift Loop and add a loop right in here and that will begin to tighten that up. If you get a little bit further away from that edge, it will smooth out, but it won't be quite as tight. So do the same thing here, and then one right in the middle. We'll go to vertex mode, and we'll push that out. Okay, readjust that topology. So now I've got a door frame that's very nice and tight using that smoothing method, and it's looking really good at this point. Now, remember, you can always go back down to edible poly mode and make some adjustments as needed. So if I want to take these edges and I want to pull those in a little bit, so in my front view, I can grab my scale tool and just kind of pull those in just to change the shape of that door frame a little bit. All right, don't be afraid to do that. All right, so we've just taken a look at how to use the smoothing methods using box modeling techniques. And in our next lesson, we're going to take a look at how to build objects using splines.